Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this tutorial, we'll be finishing off Sophie the Brussels Griffin painting. All right, guys, let's get started. So I have part one of Sophie's tutorial linked down below in the description box if you missed it. But in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to paint long black fur and how to paint glasses. We're going to kind of hop between our detail brush and I'm going to use my size 2 filbert brush for this. But we're almost going to cover the entire puppy with black except for some areas. Okay, so I'm going to start in this area above the nose. So I'll use my detail brush for this just black. That's all we're going to do. It's actually easier than you think to paint a black dog. It's just making sure that where you're placing that black is relatively the right spot. All right, so I'm going to just work this black carefully around the nose, the entire nose. Now I'm choosing to go a more simplified, realistic color approach with this tutorial, but let's say you want to really distort color. You could use a violet and or phalo blue combo and you would just start with your darkest blue and violet mixture and then start adding a little bit more white instead of using dark gray or light brown in this case. And this fur is right up underneath that left eye. Okay, and then here is where we start to see some like raw sienna and burnt sienna in our blacks but I'll still bring it down right there and then start working around that nose. So what I'm doing is just mapping out all the areas that I see a jet black in my reference photo on Sophie. And our light source, if you notice, is from the left side and a little bit above her head. That's where the light is hitting Sophie. So much of the right side of Sophie is going to be almost all black. And that's where we have to be so careful about placement. And that's also why I'm leaving a lot of white to help me not lose important body parts or details underneath all the black. Now I don't want to get rid of that indent, so I'm actually just going to leave a little bit of white there. See how I'm intentionally leaving white here just so I know where that indent is, where the inside of the mouth is. That little bit of white that we leave will actually help us for once. We don't want to get all that white in this base layer. All right, so in between like the, the layers of fur, I see there's this dark layer right here. I'm gonna paint that black. Now this is gonna feel so weird for you, intentionally leaving white spots over, but this is necessary to help us know where to place the layers on top of our black. And not only that, but not to lose important details and the direction of the fur or body parts of the animal. So embrace the ugly phase. It's absolutely mandatory to get to a beautiful painting. And in order to endure through that long, ugly phase, we must avoid any judgment. Because what builds our confidence is by practicing something in the absence of judgment and criticism. So trust me on this, you're going to want to do more art because the art that you do do, you learn from it, so you're going to get better at it and you're also going to enjoy the process because you know that you have to go through this ugly phase in order to get to that beautiful painting that we all want. So next I'm going to work on the right side of Sophie's face. I'm going to pull up that fur below her right eye just a smidge like I did below the left eye. I'm going to switch to my size 2 filbert brush because we're starting to get larger areas here. It's going to take us forever if we just use our detail brush. I'm going to make sure it's clean and damp. You just have to trust this process is going to be so ugly for a very long time. but it's the right way. It's what you have to go through to get to the, the finished product, the finished piece. It's 
lights feel so weird that we're covering so much black and just leaving a little bit of white, but you'll see it'll actually work. It really does work. Okay, so here's a tip. I'm using my filbert brush, and you notice how the ends, the brush strokes, are much thicker than my detail brush? Well, what I'll do is I'll pull it out as pretty much as far as I can, and then go in with my detail brush and cut that into the background so that it looks like individual strands of, of fur. But for now, I'll just get the, the base covering up a lot of that white. That's my goal at the beginning. And if you notice, I'm actually, to give this more value instead of having it all black, I'm gonna go in, because I see the smallest amount of like a dark gray, not quite a black right here, I'm gonna leave that white. I'm gonna actually leave that white for now. And the fur curves around like this and goes more vertically at the forehead and then curves around the opposite direction for the right side of the face. So that's what I'm gonna do with my brush strokes. Now what I suggest for this head is to cover a majority of Sophie's forehead with the black, making sure to go in the direction that the fur is laying, but not pulling it all the way out into the background yet until we're working with our detail brushes. I'm just trying to cover up a lot of white here first, and then I'll go in with the tips, the ends of those fur strands, into the background with my detail brush, because if you notice, there's a lot of wispy hairs above her eyes and below her ears. All right, now I'm gonna to work to the right, leaving a lot of that white right here and there where we'll apply highlights, and I'm just gonna start working down. Now to give you a little heads up, I use this tiny little brush to fill in the almost the entire right side of Sophie, so feel free to save yourself some time and move to a larger flat brush. Notice here it's a bit more it almost looks like curly so I'm just gonna use little bumps I'm not gonna use just a straight line for her back and go with an even larger brush I'm gonna pick up my size Six flat brush. Okay, now let's work. I could actually use this because the fur is more flat, uh, straight. I'm gonna use the flat edge of my flat brush. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna cut down the bottom because we see we brought this black down. I can bring it down even more, but I still wanna leave some white to indicate where those highlights are. So if you notice, I'm gonna curve my brush down this way and then it gets more straight this way and then it starts to curve inward the other way. Now if I were to do this painting over again, what I would have done differently is painted the chest first and gotten that completed and then painted this chin. I make it a little bit more complicated by painting the bottom below the chin after this part. And now down below here is where it's a gray. So I'm going to just probably work my black up to about there and also some black on the left side of the mouth here. And then below here, and on the chin, we'll add that gray. I 
I still see some black right here to the left of the eye as it kind of like goes in towards the eye. Okay, now if you watch me, the easiest way to do these ears is by first using a single line to find the placement, just to place them. We got some more rainbows here. Well, this is the rainbow shape that we're painting for Sophie's ears and just one line to start on both sides. And then I'll start thickening both lines, but not too much because we need to add little random strands of hair that are curling under and a few above. But whenever you're trying to place them, you always wanna start small and then work out. Now be careful about that right side because it seems like there's a lot of little strands that cut into the background, but below it, it seems like the fur above her eye is kind of pushing out into the background. So that's all I'll take it. I'll move to my detail brush now to get those longer strands. And this is gonna take some patience. It really helps to add a thin amount of paint to your brush so that it's not getting too thick and drying to your paintbrush and making it hard to move around. But let's just start on this side. I'm just gonna pull it out for focusing on the ear fur, not the hair above her eye. You might have to go over those lines that you made again, because they might just kind of be patchy. So you might have to just go over them a few times. And I noticed the, the hair strands on the tops of her ears like by the bows are shorter. They kind of go out like that. And what we also want to do is make sure that between here and the background, we don't want to leave any white. And if push comes to shove, we can try and mix up those colors again to go over that white, but that's something we were trying to avoid when we painted that background. And I'm also trying to make sure that the ends are more uh, pointy and individual, not super thick, but little thin strands of fur. So now I can work down on the, the ends of the strands on the eye. Now it's very important that you take your time here on these strands of fur. I want to add some that sit more in the center below the ear. And something really common that a lot of artists when they're creating animal art struggle with is getting those thin fur strands. And a size zero rigor brush or a size zero or one liner brush can be very helpful for this. Okay, I'm gonna wash out my brush and move to the left side now. When you're doing that, just wash out your brush so you don't have lots of paint drying to it and only pick up a little bit amount of paint at one time. So I'm just pulling down those str individual strands of fur and bringing them down into the background. And then some that just layer underneath. And if you notice too, just like this side, we also have some hair that's sticking up straight a little bit more. The direction of the fur is so important. It's not just about creating thin fur strands. It's also about the direction that they're laying or that they're standing up. Like here, they seem to be standing up a little bit more, or I guess it's just more visible on that left side than the right.
forget like we did on this side. You're gonna have fur above it that's shorter going in the opposite direction on the other ear. So now on the head, here's what I'm going to do. Although we're going to be going over this with a little bit lighter gray, I'm still going to pull up this darkness going, it's curves this way, and then comes more straight right here, and then as we're moving to the right, it curves to the right. better to be generous than not have enough of this bottom layer. And here's another thing I notice: This side of the ear drops down longer than this side. See, see that? When you paint those ears in, she just looks so cute. All right guys, so we're gonna work on our dark grays and then start pulling in some browns. Down here, we wanna make sure we have a base before we add any other details. So let's get a dark gray. So that's white with black. Okay, let's test it out. Yep, that's the perfect dark gray. And if you watch me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut up into that chin. It's okay if you take it up a little higher. We can just layer the strands over top when we uh, reapply that black on the chin. And just like this side, we're gonna make the bumpy, bumpiness along that shoulder. And then I'll just fill it in. Now I just wanna give you a heads up. We're gonna carefully transition from this medium to dark gray to the black which is why we need to then pull in some black soon to join these two areas together. So it doesn't look so blocky and choppy. We're gonna use our brush and the color black soon working wet into wet. Okay, and while that's wet, this is important because while that's wet, I'm gonna pull in some black and I'm gonna start our first layers that really starts to look like fur. And I'm just gonna have this fur kind of, she has slightly curly hair, but it's definitely longer. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have these strands go up and down with a slight curve as they move to the left. We don't really see much of that area because it's zoomed in so much to her face. So we're gonna do a little bit of improv improvising. All right, so let's continue on with that gray. I'm gonna add in more black and white to it just to mix up some more of it. And next, I'm gonna pull in a little bit of raw sienna and some burnt sienna. Okay, so that's raw sienna and burnt sienna into that gray. We're gonna add 
we're going to fill in the rest of the white in some areas, and then we'll go in with just a gray in other areas. I'll show you what I mean. Let's test it out to make sure that's not too bright. Oh, that's good. All right, so we started with our black. We moved to a dark gray. Now this is more of a grayish brown. And we're going to cover up lots of our white, but layer also over a lot of our black too. We have a lot more of this brown on the left side and a bit on the head and around the ears. So make sure you have enough of this color. The fur is much shorter to the left of the eye right here where I'm working. I'm still trying to be careful that the tips of those strands are pointy and not blocky. Then my lines will get a little bit longer and slightly thicker in some areas and curve down more around the snout. Now I'm noticing right here, I probably won't need to take that down more. So I'm gonna have to remix that pink right there. All right, so then I'm gonna work on individual strands on the top of this ear. So if you watch me, on the top of it, I'm just gonna go around that curve. Get some highlights on that ear. Same with the top of this ear. Oh, I got too much white in there. And then right here. So I'm gonna hold my brush more vertically making smaller clusters of lines over top that black we made, but going in that exact same direction that we did before when we were painting that in. Oh, too much of that color can be a little too much, so I'm gonna use my finger to wipe that off If you notice, there's actually a pretty strong highlight of this color right here. It's like where the fur begins to curl around above the eye. And then just a little bit more like that. There's also some on this side of the face, but it's a bit more subtle. So next what I'm gonna do is mix up a dark gray and we'll not add that raw sienna to it. I'm just making a dark gray with black and white. And where I'm gonna add this is right here above the nose. If you watch me, I'm gonna go over that white. I'm gonna fill in that white, but also again, going in that same direction where it curves this way, curves that way and it's straight in the middle. Oops, make sure you don't go to the wrong gray. I went to the other more brown one. And if you add more than you need, like right now, I think I'm gonna have to bring it down with my black and, and we can go back to our blacks. We will have to go black. Black to our blacks, goodness. Back to our black is what we will have to do. But we won't stop there with this gray. I'm also gonna use it to fill in the rest of the white on the chin that we left. I'm just gonna bring it down over top that white. In fact, let's add more black to it. 
because I'm finding that's a little too too dark, uh, light. I'm gonna add more black to that and fill in the rest of the white. Now we're not done with that gray because we'll also use it to fill in the white that we have left over, clustering more lines over top that black and covering up that white right below the nose. What this looks like is thinning out some of those colors so just bringing them in so thinning out by just painting over some of those areas like I did here see how I'm painting over it to thin out those lines really take your time in this step because this is important. This kind of like tightens things up to where we start to move out of that ugly phase. If you notice, there's, there's wispy hairs that curl over top Sophie's left side of her face. Instead of going down like this, it curves a little, little more. We also have some, here's something big. We also want to get little clusters of lines of dark fur. At the ends, at some of the ends are this light brown like here, and then some are actually, we see more black. So that's where I'll apply this to the ends, especially towards the bottom of her mouth. And then definitely, lots to define on that chin. I'm gonna bring my black down again so that we really get the length on her chin at this point. We really wanna just make these strands count. Kind of notice it curves slightly, a little bit for her. It's not just this straight line at the bottom, like it's not just straight. And there's more black on the right side than there are highlights on the left. Looking so good. I'm gonna bring down this gray by cutting into that gray on the forehead. Now you'll hear me use the word cutting in a lot because I'm just trying to refine each strand. No one says we can't go back to those dark values and use the negative space now to refine and clean up those layers on top. All right, so I'm gonna move up on the top, closer to the top of Sophie's head now. I am gonna pull up that black area on her head up a little bit more, and then refine those highlights of that brownish gray that we applied.
So next I'm going to pull the black down a little further on Sophie's right side of her face into the background. Then I'll also pull up that highlight, painting over some of the light brownish gray that we painted above the eye. That highlight I just pulled a little too far down above the right eye. I am going to lift up some of that black right over top some of the white that I have left over. And I might need to go back to that lighter brown, this one right here, and bring it up. Now that we have this gray down, we can definitely bring more black into that chin. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be covering up a lot of that gray. So I'm bringing these black hairs down a little bit further. I'm getting rid of any of the little white specks that I see and also refining them. And then I'm going to bring up, there's white of the canvas that I need to make sure I cover up. I'm going to mix up a little bit lighter brownish gray. So I'll mix up a gray first, black and white. Then I'll pull in some burnt sienna and more raw sienna. So that's white, black, burnt sienna, and raw sienna. All right, let's test this out. It needs to be lighter than, a, oh, it's pretty much the same value as before, so I'm gonna add more white. We don't need much. This is actually maybe a little too light. Yeah, that's a little too light. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more black to it. Okay, that's good. Now I like to save these fur strands closer to the end of the painting, the ones that are laying in totally weird opposite directions. Like this one that curls over top the lip almost. I wanna be very careful with these strands because they stand out so much. I'll also add some real short ones, but such tiny thin ones below the nose. Now this color also works well right by the eye. I see there's a strong highlight right there in the corner of the eye on the inside. And I really want to define that highlight on the very outer edge, not inside the eye, but on the far outer edge. This color is perfect for that. And we're 
definitely getting a few. There, keep a steady hand. I know this can be intimidating. It's like painting whiskers. But it might actually help to flatten out your brush. See how I'm doing this? How I'm flatting, flattening my flat brush? Well, this is actually a round brush. We're going to get more highlights on the left side of the chin. The fur here is going to get highlighted and here, but in between this area is going to be darker. So I'm not going to take these highlights in this area at all. Another place we can add these to make more bright colored fur strands is on the top of the left ear. And I'll pull that lightness out on that highlight above the right eye and below the right ear. I need to richen up the black on this right side, so I'm going to move to my filbert brush for that. I'm going to add another layer of black over top the right side of Sophie, just trying to make sure it's a real solid black layer. I don't want there be to be any white specks or any areas that look almost like a dark gray. All right, so now real carefully, we'll reapply our black to those areas around the highlights. So take your time here. Be so careful you don't go over those highlights or accidentally thicken up strands of fur that are supposed to be thin. All right, so next I'm gonna mix up a little bit darker. We're gonna go backwards going a bit darker. So, but we'll use the same colors. Black, white, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Perfect, I think that's the color I want. All right, so the purpose of this color is to join or connect some of those real light areas and the real dark black areas. What's really gonna make your dog portrait or your cat portrait stand out is it has a wide range of light highlights a wide range of dark values and a wide range of those medium or what I call those joiner colors. And then I can use this color right above this eye. I'm noticing there's a little bit more of a highlight than I saw before. And I'm gonna add black to this because I just feel like this eye needs something, needs a little something there. So I'm gonna bring a little bit more of a highlight 
inside there. There we go. I feel like that brings that eye back. And then I'm going to go once again back to my black and then just tighten that up another time. Going over some of those strands just to make them thinner and showing the direction of the, the fur. I'm going to bring this highlight down because it just is a little too high up on the, the snout. I need to richen up the black on this right side, so I'm going to move to my filbert brush for that. And go with just black again and make that a little stronger dark, or black. All right, so great job on the fur. We're gonna work next on the pet glasses. I'll be using fluorescent pink that I just added to my paint palette. I'm mixing up some permanent red into that and white. So that's permanent red, fluorescent pink, and white. I definitely recommend using a size one liner brush for this or your rigger brush. And we're gonna start with thin lines, creating the structure of the glasses first and foremost. So I'm just going to use two lines for where I want the inside frame of the glasses. Okay, so that's usually how around, and it's not going to go over this area because that fur is in front. It's going to sit behind it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to imagine it wraps around, and then I'm going to create a line that goes curves back up like that. And then I'm going to curve it on the other side and do the same thing very carefully. See, I'm going to pretend I can see a line and it's going to come out right here, which is about even with that side. And then I'm using my paintbrush as like the width like that. I'll mark it that way. I'm going to curve it back down. And then slightly up, I curved it slightly up for the other side. Great. And then a little curve right there in the center. Okay, so I have the, the structure of the glasses now. I can just thicken it up. So once you have the completed structure of the glasses frame, now we can thicken it up. And this can be tricky because the goal is to try and make both sides symmetrical and which means keeping the width of the glass frame the same. So just take your time, continue using your brush. And the other thing here too 
is I'm trying to keep the left side of those glasses lighter than the right. So I'll use more white and fluorescent pink for the left side of those glasses, and then a lot less pink and less white and more permanent red for the right side. Now, if you really want to get fancy schmancy, you can add little jewels on the top or anywhere around the glasses. And then here's a little tip that I've done before for glasses. If you want to get more detail in those glasses is by using pearl white. I like to get the metallic pearl white by Arteza and I'll add a little bit of water to that and I'll paint that over top the eyeball within that glass frame on both sides to make it look like light is reflecting off of that glass. So that really does work. And it's a thin enough coat that you can tell that that looks like the glass of the glasses. Okay, so I noticed that I want to bring up this eye a little bit more because it just looks a little down too far. And the glasses really draw attention to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a another dark gray and try to match it to that gray we laid for the left of that eye, that right eye. And I'm very carefully going to lift it up. And then I'll use black to outline the sides of it. lift the bottom up as well with black. See how I did that? I just moved the eye up very carefully and then I'll even get rid of this highlight here because we're gonna have to pull that highlight up just like we did with the eye. So that's what I'll do. I'll go back to that same gray, a little dab right in the center top there, And then we'll go back to adding a few, I'll probably add two, three more layers to those glasses so they really stand out over that black. All right, so for the next few minutes, I'll be adding more brightness, more layers to those glasses so they stand out over top the black of Sophie's fur. And I'll also thicken up those glasses a smidge as well.
All right, creative. So we've almost reached the end of our Brussels Griffin tutorial. I'm going to be going with my black in just a little bit and just refining the entire outer edge of Sophie, making sure all the strands cutting into the background are thin and pointy. I'll also be further refining those individual strands on Sophie's snout and around her ears. And then this is something that I discovered a day after painting Sophie is it looked a little funny with that gray behind her glasses because when I added that, I didn't think I was gonna add glasses. So to get rid of that or to just tone it down so it's not so bright and it looks like there's a shadow behind there, I watered down black to create a wash. So I left lots of water on my brush, went in and added it to black so it's really watery. And then I just paint it behind there to tone that gray down so it's not so light. That way it looks like those glasses stand out even more and that she's not got some sort of gray thing behind those glasses. All right, creatives, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, I'm just gonna add some final touches with my black. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help you. If you already haven't, make sure you nominate your pet for the next tutorial, but have a blessed day. Bye.